Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how to form an acetal. We're going to be converting an aldehyde or a ketone using an alcohol or a diol into an acetal. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we're comfortable with our functional groups. So the first structure we have here is clearly a ketone. We have carbon, carbonyl, carbon. The second functional group here is clearly an aldehyde where one of those carbons has been replaced by a hydrogen. So we need to define some new functional groups here. And what I'm going to point out is we're going to define two terms, hemiacetal and acetal. So this first structure here, notice I wrote R or H. So if this is R, it comes from a ketone. If it is an H, it comes from an aldehyde. So I can have either of these carbon or hydrogen here, aldehyde or ketone. But what I really want to do is focus on the carbon that was the carbonyl. So the carbon that was the carbonyl is in blue. You'll notice instead of having a double bond to an O, where we had the aldehyde ketone, I now have two single bonds to O. And when you have an OH and an OR, that is now called a hemiacetal. All right, and let's just draw a couple examples of a hemiacetal here. Here I have an OH and an O-methyl. So there's an example of a hemiacetal. The other new functional group we introduce is very similar. Again, it can come from an aldehyde or a ketone. Again, we're going to look at this carbon that was the carbonyl from the aldehyde or the ketone, but now we have two OR groups connected. So again, instead of double bond O from the aldehyde or ketone, we have OR, OR. And that functional group is called an acetal. All right, so let's look at a couple examples of acetals. I could have OET and OET. All right, so that's an example of an acetal. Another example is that acetal functional group could be connected as a ring. So again, here's this central carbon connected to two oxygens, and it turns out that these two O's are connected to each other as well. So these are two examples of acetals. This is a cyclic acetal here. And um, another example, let's just draw another example of a cyclic acetal. Here I could have O connect by two carbons again. And again, that is also referred to as a cyclic acetal. All right, so in this video, we're going to be focusing on converting a ketone and an aldehyde into our final product, which will be an acetal and sort of look like one of these three main structures. Okay, so let's take a look at this specific example here. So we're going to react our ketone. In this case, we're going to use a diol. And that diol is now going to form our cyclic acetal. All right. So again, ketone plus diol and acid will form our cyclic acetal. And what I want to do is really work through this mechanism. All right. The key here is we need acid to catalyze this reaction. So a ketone is not a strong electrophile, not strong enough to react with a neutral alcohol. And the neutral alcohol is a not strong enough nucleophile to react with this electrophile. So we basically need acid to um, beef up the electrophilicity of this ketone. And we're going to do that by protonating our ketone. So let's work through the mechanism here. The first step is a lone pair on the oxygen is going to attack our H plus to protonate it. So there's my new bond to my H plus. 
Therefore, I only have one lone pair on my oxygen and a positive charge on that O. Now we can draw a good resonance structure here. If I move these arrows up, I can have a single bond to the O, and that bond becomes a lone pair on our oxygen. And now this carbon is missing a bond. It only has three, therefore it has a positive charge. So what we've done by protonating our ketone, or aldehyde, but in this case a ketone, we've now made a super electrophile. So this species here is now very electrophilic. So this diol, which was just a weak nucleophile, can now attack. So let's show those arrows here. So I'm going to draw in my lone pairs, and that lone pair is going to attack the carbon of the carbonyl, which pushes our double bond up and becomes a lone pair on our oxygen. So here is our attack step. So what we've formed, here is our original ketone. This now becomes an OH with two lone pairs. And we've now formed a new bond. I'm going to make this a little bit darker. There's my new bond to the O. That O is still connected to its H and then also to the other alcohol by a two carbon chain. What we have to keep in mind is this O had two lone pairs. Now it only has one and therefore that oxygen has a positive charge. So if we look, we now have three oxygens here. The O's from the diol are the O's that make up the acetal. So we want to keep this O. To get rid of this positive charge, we need to remove an H and a plus. We need to remove H plus, and that's the next step in the mechanism. So I could use my diol or I could use water. So I'm just going to write a water molecule here. Let's draw in those lone pairs. And this water molecule can steal that H. These electrons can come down to form a lone pair on the oxygen, thereby deprotonating this hydrogen to get our next intermediate. So this OH is still there. Now I have an O still connected to our OH. So we're essentially halfway done through our mechanism. And what you should notice here is we know what this functional group is called. This is our hemiacetal. And we're about halfway through our mechanism. Again, this intermediate has three oxygens, where our product only has two. So we need to get rid of another oxygen and we're going to get rid of the oxygen that was the original O on the ketone. So the O on the ketone that we originally protonated in the first step, we're going to protonate that oxygen again. So let's draw in our lone pairs again, and we're going to now protonate that oxygen. So we're going to attack an H+. So that oxygen now, instead of having two bonds and two lone pairs, has three bonds and one lone pair, and therefore a positive charge. The rest of the molecule is still intact, so we'll draw our O, two bond connection to our OH. What we've done here is really convert this OH into a protonated OH, which is now a fantastic leaving group. So the lone pair on our oxygen, there's two here, these lone pairs can come down to form an oxygen-carbon double bond, thereby, thereby kicking off our water molecule. And this is an elimination step. We're eliminating out our water molecule. So here's that double bond we made. This oxygen now has three bonds and only one lone pair. Therefore, that O has a positive charge. 
And just like we saw in our first step, where we have a double bond to O and O with three bonds, we can draw a nice resonance structure where the plus is on the carbon. So let's draw that resonance structure here. So if we move these electrons up to here, that gets me an O with two lone pairs. And now the carbon is missing three bonds, so the carbon now has a positive charge. And these are the resonance structures we can generate. So again, just as in the first case, by doing that, we've made a great electrophile. And that's the same thing here. This carbon is now very electrophilic. You can see it has a positive charge here. So just as we had a lone pair on the O attack, we can do the same thing here. Now in this example, because we have a diol, we're not going to have a second equivalent of this attack. Because right attached to our molecule is another OH that can act as a good nucleophile. And we need to remember that intramolecular reactions are always going to happen faster. So this lone pair can now attack that carbon of the carbonyl, kicking those electrons up onto the O. If you wanted to, you could draw the same arrows from this resonance structure here, where you just show a new bond from the O to the carbon. So again, what we've done here is now an attack step. So let's draw this intermediate. Here's our four carbon chain. I now have an, a bond to an O, a two carbon chain to our other O, and there's our new bond. What we have to remember is this O is connected to that carbon chain and H, and now we have a new bond here. So we have to remember it's still connected to this hydrogen. It had two lone pairs and two bonds. Now it has three bonds and one lone pair. And therefore, that O has a positive charge. So you can see we're now one step away from getting our product. And all we need to do is the same thing we did before, which is to deprotonate that hydrogen. So I can take a molecule of water, or you could use your dial to deprotonate. The water will steal the H, will break the hydrogen-oxygen bond that will become a lone pair on our O, so now our oxygen will have two lone pairs, and it will be neutral. And that is a deprotonation step. So that is the complete mechanism for converting a ketone and a diol into a cyclic acetal. All right. Again, what I want to point out here is this oxygen here in green gets protonated in the beginning it gets protonated again, and in this step leaves, so the side product we form is H2O, where this oxygen is the oxygen that came from the ketone. I'd also like to clarify that the O's of the diol here are the oxygens now found in our acetal. We also need to keep in mind that this reaction is completely reversible. So if I take this final product as an acetal and I treat an acetal with H plus in water, so dilute acid, I'm going to do the exact reverse reaction. I would protonate, I would eliminate, I would attack, deprotonate, protonate, eliminate, and deprotonate to get the same starting material. So in this case, the reaction is reversible. If I take an acetal, treat it with H plus and water, I will get back a ketone plus my diol. Okay, so ketone and diol and acid forms an acetal. If you take an acetal, treat it with H plus, you get back your ketone and your diol. Okay, so let's look at our next example here. In this case, we started with an aldehyde. Doesn't matter whether it's an aldehyde or ketone, they'll react exactly the same way. But here we don't have a diol, we have an alcohol, ETOH. 
right? So what we have to keep in mind here is I'm going to need two equivalents of my ethanol to form my acetal. So for this example, I'm going to draw in the product. The acetal that we form would be an O ET and another O ET. So in this case, because this is an alcohol, I'm going to not get a cyclic acetal. This is, of course, still called an acetal, but it's no longer cyclic. So what I'd like you to do for class is I would like you to show me the mechanism. So the mechanism is going to be exactly as we saw in the previous slide. You're going to protonate, then attack, then deprotonate. You'll protonate again, you'll eliminate, you'll attack again, and then deprotonate. And what you have to keep in mind for the second attack step, it's not going to be intramolecular, it's going to be intermolecular. In that second attack step, you're going to use your second equivalent of ETOH to do the attack. So please convert or finish or complete this mechanism and bring that into class.